So now we're going to have a, a short presentation. Uh, I think you have about uh, 10 minutes. Uh, uh, Colm Dunphy from uh, Southeast Technological University in Ireland. Uh, the title of your presentation is a Tutor Stack 22, a five year review of the conceptual framework for blended online and digital. Colm, I'll let you introduce yourself. Uh, have to say, I don't have your, your, your bio. But the, floor is your, the floor is yours. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Uh, I'm Colm Dunphy. I'm a lecturer in SETU in Waterford in Ireland. Um, my background is um, a computer programmer, software developer, um, teaching in, in computing for almost 30 years now, uh, but also uh, I have a background in, in media as well. Um, so trying to combine both of those uh, to help us move online um, which we've been working at for many years now, but we made the leap about five years ago um, and we launched our university's first fully online program. And uh, in preparing for that, we sp spent many years looking at MOOCs and online programs uh, with, with having almost zero budget. Uh, we tried to come up with a framework for delivering online that would help us to achieve um, some of the the uh, uh, the properties of, of the best online courses that we'd seen. Um, so Tutor Stack is a framework for delivering these blended online and digital, um, and we've expanded it to capture the insights um, that we can get from the the various learning analytics from the tools that we've chosen. Um, I, I should start out by saying that uh, you know. Many of us use learning management systems and tutor stack um, after we had kind of developed it for about a year, realized that it's an unbundling of the learning management system. So learning management systems are full of features, many of them not used and they complicate things for the lecturer. Um, and the learning experience is not great uh, with many of the most established ones. So we, we set to try and uh, solve that problem. Um, so some of the, the key objectives, uh, it's, it has to be either open source, free, or very low cost. Um, these were these were our guiding principles. It's very easy to throw money at a problem, but we didn't have the money to throw at the problem. So um, Tutor Stack is an attempt uh, to, to sort that out. So this is the conceptual framework. It's got four layers. Um, the first layer there is learning materials. And this would traditionally be handled by the learning management system, but most of the ones that we looked at at the time had very poor user experience and weren't very graphical. They weren't very visual, and we tried to, to solve that. Um, the other uh, big find when, when we were researching was that people who were taking online courses, their biggest complaint was communications, that communications came from everywhere. There was, you know, multiple messages in the learning management system, in the email system, uh, duplication, and we tried to solve that problem as well. Um, also, assessment and feedback it was essential. And if you're going online, video is going to be an important element of that uh, for most people. Uh, so we wanted to have high quality, broadcast quality uh, video and how we could do that on a budget. So we've got uh, four layers there. Um, and what you see on the right hand side then are our solutions to solving uh, each of those layers. So tutors is effectively, um, it's a card based hierarchical system, which we'll see a bit and more of in, in a second, uh, which gives you a visual interface for students uh, and all of your content for, for the course. Uh, for the communications, we use Slack. Uh, it's a messaging app, and uh, we use that for all communications. We actually set a rule that we do not use email at all uh, once our students are registered. Um, we then integrated Zoom into Slack so that we could do video because uh, Slack uh, turned off their, their video and video sharing and, and desktop sharing in 2019. And this was their recommendation. Um, for assessment and feedback, uh, we use the traditional Moodle uh, for our summative assessment because that keep, keeps records uh, nice and tidy uh, and Socrative for formative assessment. And then for media, uh, we went to YouTube 
Uh, YouTube is where we store all our video content uh, and we manage it there and we get a lot of benefit uh, by having our classes in YouTube with um, closed captions, transcriptions, interactive transcriptions and translations. Uh, to get the video there, um, we use open broadcasts uh, software which is open source software. It's an encoder. And the, the advantage of using this is that you can have different layouts uh, on your screens. And then to annotate our uh, discussions, we use screen brush um, uh, so that we can you know, annotate on screen, highlight uh, and so on. Um, all of these uh, layers give us information. Uh, what we've done is develop Tutors Live and Tutors Time, uh, which effectively simplify the gathering of all of the analytics. Now, there's lots of objectives there. I won't go through them all, just, just a couple. You know, we wanted to create a MOOC-like experience uh, for small private groups, uh, online uh, courses, uh, using a single platform for communications, etc. cetera. Um, so this is what Tutors looks like. Uh, this is one of the things we, we've developed to, to support one of the layers. Um, it's a collection of open source components and services supporting the creation of transformative learning experiences using open web standards. This is a, an, an open source project. It's very active at the moment. Uh, we've had uh, input now from a number of companies that are after getting involved, um, and uh, it, it, it seems to be going pretty well. Uh, also, students current and past are contributing to the project uh, as they experience uh, the learning through the system. Uh, they identify things they'd like to improve and they get involved. Uh, the course that we're uh, developing all this under is the Higher Diploma in Computer Science. And this is uh, what a full course would look like in, in this platform. Uh, so it's a two-year course, four semesters. And this is the, if you like, the landing page for the entire program. Um, so what you're seeing as uh, cards, each card uh, is is part of a hierarchy. So each one of these cards usually, uh, for example, is uh, a different module on the program. We can click into a card and we can then see all of the classes for a semester. Um, this would be at the end of the semester where all the content is released. Um, and we, we would tend to release it and make it visible week by week rather than showing it all together. But this gives you an idea of, of uh, for example, a 12-week course in computer programming. Um, and again, you can click into a card and you would see, for example, for one week where we have two classes, um, the, the big box at the top of, on each side here is actually a video. Uh, but this would be the live stream that the students would click on in order to take the course. And then underneath, we see the cards, the content uh, th that's going to be discussed. Uh, there's also labs and quizzes uh, as well. Now, you you'll also notice that there's play buttons on the cards. So after a class has happened, automatically for the lecturer, without any um, intervention, uh, the content becomes available um, as a video. Uh, so the, the, the difference between streaming and video is completely transparent to both the lecturer and to the student. They go to the, to the same place. Uh, but the student, uh, sorry, the lecturer can, after taking a class, um, can just write a description and we take those descriptions and we, we can then break out the videos. So this is something we've been working on for for some time. Before we used to chop up the videos, it was very time consuming. Then upload shorter ones because the um, the literature says that you know a video should be no more than six minutes long. So we would be chopping up and re-encoding videos, and we we did a lot of work in that. But YouTube simplified it by allowing us to take the descriptions, and we integrated that with this uh, tutor system to be able to put shorter videos on the cards after the event is happening. Um, after um, interviewing our students, what we've found is that different students use the content in different ways. Some like to see a long class, others like really short ones, uh, but it's about 50-50. Um, so uh, we, we provide it both ways. Uh, we also get analytics from this. This gives us, uh, for example, a calendar view of the students interacting. Uh, so you can see which ones are, are doing a lot of work, which ones are not, when they're working, what they're working on. Uh, very simple view without, without having to, to do much. Uh, this is a summary of, of an entire class. Uh, red means they haven't started yet, so you can see if students are falling behind uh, and how the class is going. And social presence is a big thing that we've discovered along the way, and we have implemented a, a system to try and uh, improve social presence. So when the students are online, because they're 
distributed and it's a fully online course. This gives visibility on what they're actually working on at a given time. And what we plan to do in the future is to enable one button here to enable you to, to um, create a video session through Zoom uh, and Slack um, so that you can discuss the topic that you're working on. We also produced uh, some hardware um, using a thing called Stream Deck. This is a programming, programmable button. It's like a remote control. And this enables the lecturer to do online classes a lot easier. Rather than learning all the software, they can just focus on learning a few features. Um, and we, we've built pods to facilitate the online learning. Um, uh, you can see on the left there, and we specify all the features to do this on a budget. And this is our latest one where we've taken everything we've learned from the previous one. Um, and then mounted them on a stand-up desk so that we can get our sc green screening and lighting right, but it's all mounted on a desk. Um, so we've done a paper. We've looked at the, the themes, uh, some of the key themes, presence, responsiveness, immediacy, analytics, insights, and uh, the productions. And the paper discusses then um, uh, the technology choices, whether it's relevant still uh, after the pandemic um, and how successful it is. Um, it compares it to um, the online uh, teaching competencies. Um, we look at our limitations and some future work that we're planning on as well. And I think I'm just about there. That's it. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Colm. Uh, very impressive. It looks like you've uh, built the holy grail of a uh, tool for teaching online. Um, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are there any questions? Could you, could you just tell us a few words about uh, the team that uh, that was involved and what what is the profile of the people working on this? Sure, yeah. Uh, so um, two colleagues um, initially, um, Eamon de Lester and Peter Windle. Um, and um, I see Laura's here as well. Laura Widger has given us guidance uh, all these years. Um, uh, the makeup would be Eamon. Eamon is a pure software developer and Eamon is responsible primarily for uh, the tutors uh, system that, that I described there. Um, so it started as a, a plugin for Moodle um, where they wanted to be able to put a series of steps uh, so that you could do a lab for a computing lab uh, and to be able to make that simpler to create in Moodle because it was quite a pain in Moodle many years ago. Um, and then in creating that little plugin, uh, using the technology at the time, it was Python. Uh, Eamon has used this with multiple languages. So he teaches software uh, development. So every time there's a new framework or a new language, he's re-implementing it in those to, to try it out. Um, but uh, it's become its own thing now. And it's a, instead of being a plugin for Moodle, it's, it's, a, it's a whole system. Um, the, the team has expanded. Uh, so... Uh, the year before last, we took on three students and we officially started a, an open source project. Um, the students were actually active on the program. Uh, they were on work placement and wanting to give back. Uh, uh, we create a really good community. Um, social presence is, we didn't know it was called social presence when we started out, but you know, from reading the literature and running the classes, we, we realized that's the theme in the uh, in the literature. Um, and the students really do get involved and we, we create really good relationships with them. Um, one of the students who is now leading the uh, the tutors development team, um, we we interview the students to, to come onto the course. And I remember interviewing this particular student and he, he's saying that he really didn't like the look of our tutors and uh, he, he, he looked forward to learning the technology so he could change it for us. Uh, and, uh, so he's going to be presenting at uh, the Google Developer Conference in two weeks. Uh, he's given a one hour talk on how they developed it. Um, and he's very active in that. Uh, some of the some of the th things that we've done in the last year uh, in particular, uh, we had a student who was, um, you know, very interested in dyslexia and dis uh, disabled needs. Um, so we have themes for blindness. We have themes for dyslexia. Uh, so the student can just with one selection change the look of the font and it changes all of your content, uh, changes the font, the color schemes and so on. Um, yeah. 
uh, and, uh, and and most recently we've had several companies get involved uh, tutors.dev if, if you take a look at the website you can see the profile of the people getting involved now big companies like IBM uh, Red Hat um, I forget the others <laughs> but there's, uh, there's, there's a few more in there uh, thank, thanks so much there are a few comments and uh, questions in the chat uh, Colm I don't want I don't know okay. if you want to, to take them sure uh a very uh, it requires teacher skills in online teaching yes so um one of the things i i've just completed um a master's in education over the summer um and we would have been looking at uh, one of the things i looked at were teaching competencies um so one of the assignments we were giving was what, what makes a good teacher uh, and it was coming from a traditional background of you know traditional delivery in a classroom and what were the competencies there um uh, but I decided to expand it and look for frameworks um, and competencies for online teaching. And there is a very uh, definite uh, distinction. So uh, an online teacher is a superset of, of, an, of a teacher. So you, you still need all of the same skills that you would need in the classroom, but there were a couple of additional ones, uh, additional competencies that make you a really good online teacher. Um, so our job is, does the tutor stack facilitate meeting those competencies and uh i i've got a in the paper you'll see there's uh that we we, we, we did manage to do that uh what else is there i, I, I like uh, neil's comment uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so I think there's a uh, are you using eye tracking or something like this to understand how the learners follow the issue in order to assess the quality of the learning. Uh, no, we're not that far yet. Um, if you, we'd love to hear from you. Um, if you want to get involved with that, we'd, we'd certainly be, be interested in that. Uh, we're not that far in. What we've been doing is is um, managing. Uh, I, I, will, I sh showed some heat maps. Um, so we went down the route of Google Analytics for every page that was generated for all the content for your course. Um, we we were um, we were tracking that through Google Analytics, and it generated far far too much data, uh, and we found out things that we shouldn't know. <laughs> so we backtracked um, and we made it we made it simpler, and it's quite simple at the moment. It's it uh, when you load up a page, um, it knows that the page is 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 active. And uh, if you click off the page, it stops, but it starts counting while the page is active. Um, now, it knows what all the pages are, so we can then build up a profile of which pages are being looked at and for how long they're looked at. So the idea is that, you know, if, if, it, if the color turns black, it means that you're spending an awful lot amount of time on that particular topic. And that's maybe something for the lecturer to look at. Maybe you made the topic too hard if everybody's having that problem. Uh, on the other side, if, if it's in if it's a, a bright color, it means they're really not spending enough time on it. Um, and what, what's really useful here is that we've been able to use this information to make uh, interventions with the students through Slack. So we say, how is it going? You, you, you look like you're having trouble. <laughs> do, do you want a hand? Um, and we have found that's helped with retention. So our retention figures are going up. Thank you. Thank you very much.